Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we're going to be taking a look at this awesome super shorty AR-15 pistol that I just built. It's kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge of parts and it's not really a complete build. I built the lower from the ground up. However, the upper I did buy completely assembled. The upper is the 7.5 inch 300 blackout pistol upper. And this upper is from Palmetto State Armory. They were the ones that manufactured the upper completely. And this was one of the uppers that came with the charging handle and with the bolt carrier group. I do have plans of actually switching out both. However, the pistol as it sits right now was perfectly fine to get it to the range. So that's what I wanted to do to get it out for a first impressions video. And it is just their standard mil spec charging handle, which I definitely, if I'm gonna be switching out anything next, it will probably be this uh, mil spec charging handle. Not a huge deal. But you guys see there in the back roll footage that I was shooting it on kind of a rainy day and that mil spec charging handle just gets really, really hard to get to. Moving forward on the pistol, I have a Silencer Co. ASR muzzle brake on here. This is actually really special because this entire build, the reason I built this super shorty 300 blackout was actually to suppress with my Omega suppressor from Silencer Co. that I am waiting currently on my tax stamp for. So I figured I would get this build going during my waiting process. I'm only about three and a half, four months in right now, so I still have quite a bit longer. You guys will be seeing this little pistol out for a full review suppressed when I get my tax stamp approved and I can throw this Omega on the end of this ASR break. For the sights, I actually, this was the first time I ever went with the MBUS Pro sights that are actually the metal over the polymer sights. These sights are pretty phenomenal. The front sight post is extremely thin, great for accurate shooting, and they do actually kind of snap down in place really, really firm, and they're very, very low profile on the rail. So I'm actually super, super happy with those, and I'm really happy I kind of went that extra step and paid a little bit more money on there. On the end, we have for the stabilizing brace, it is still the KAK blade. I do have plans potentially about throwing on the new five position adjustable brace that SB Tactical just came out with. For the pistol grip, I just went with the more vertical BCM pistol grip, which again, it's a great grip. Uh, I am a fan of Magpul products, but I am also a fan of BCM products. I think their pistol grips are awesome. For the trigger, I actually went with a Geisley super dynamic enhanced which is an absolutely phenomenal trigger this trigger is 3.5 pounds and it is a two-stage trigger just take a look at this uh, this reset and break here it's pretty phenomenal so here's your take up you have just a little bit of take up here really really smooth probably like about a pound of take up and then your clean crisp break there's your reset there, a little bit of take up and then your break again. This trigger is absolutely phenomenal. When I was at the range, it just made me wanna shoot faster and faster and faster. I mean, it was just, it was a lot of fun. Now I will say the muzzle brake helps. This is the first time I've ever gone with a barrel length this short with a pistol length gas tube. I was always kind of on the, on the edge with whether or not the pistol length gas tube would be as reliable as your standard carbine length. And I definitely would not go with a barrel length under 10.5 inches if I was going 5.56. Five, but with 300 blackout, I'm pretty sure your best barrel length was around nine nice. inches. So I'm just slightly below that nine inch mark with the 7.5. The only downfall is that although the brake helped mitigate recoil, there was still quite a bit of muzzle rise when I started getting some faster shooting. You guys can see that in a couple of the back roll footage where the, the gun just started to kind of walk. And the reason for that is because although I can get my hand up a little bit higher, there's only so much that I can grab and control and you're still getting a little bit of muzzle flip because the barrel is just simply so short. I haven't shot many rounds for this. It was only a couple of boxes at the range to just get it out for the first impressions and to really just make sure it functioned well. So no issues with cycling. I had no issues and I'm just using the standard buffer, standard buffer spring. So that was really nice. It locked open every time the gun was empty and functioned flawlessly. The ammunition that I was using was just simply the Remington 120 grain. These were hollow points and they still fed just fine. Obviously not subsonic because I 
I was not shooting suppressed. I was able to pick up this Remington ammunition for a little over $15 a box of 20, which for 300 blackout isn't too bad. But as you guys know, 300 blackout is definitely a reloader's cartridge. If you do reload, you can end up saving quite a bit on 300 blackouts. I was originally going to get the same exact upper where the rail went to seven inches instead of six inches. This is their six inch free float rail. And obviously this is a 7.5 inch barrel. Their pictures, their, their photos on Palmetto State Armory really don't show it well. Their seven inch barrel, there was just no way to tell with whether or not I was gonna get enough clearance to still run my suppressor on with this ASR brake. And so because of that, I had to play it safe and make it so there was a little bit of a gap here. In hindsight, I think I made the right decision because if you can imagine another inch on this rail, it's just, it's gonna hover right to that point where I don't think you could attach a suppressor if you wanted to. Now, if you're not shooting it suppressed, then this obviously wouldn't be an issue to you. And I probably would go with the seven inch rail just so there's not kind of that awkward gap. And there's just a little bit more room to either add an attachment or to just give you a little bit more gripping space. I'm really excited to see how this build transforms or assembly or whatever you wanna call it, how it transforms over time. All in all guys, this is a sweet little build. I'm really excited to see how it's going to shoot suppressed in a couple of months whenever I get my tax stamp back. And you guys will absolutely be seeing that here on the channel in probably about four to five months overall. And we'll be getting a full in-depth review on this little super shorty. That's gonna pretty much wrap this video up, guys. If you have any questions on any specific parts or anything like that that I have on this little build, put it down in the comment section and I absolutely will get back to you. Also, head down there to the description and go to the Facebook and Instagram account of Firearm Freedom. On the Instagram account, we do really fun stuff like live streams and daily posts, so be sure to give those a follow. Also, click that subscribe button and ring that bell. It'll allow you to not miss out on any of the awesome content that I have coming out here on the YouTube account. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more great videos to come soon.